gigantic screens, impressive audio, and impeccable image quality, IMAX has become synonymous with high-end movie-going experiences. Large format filmmaking is far from common though, with 1570 film being prohibitively expensive and filmmakers being carefully vetted before obtaining the privilege of shooting on an IMAX film camera. Today in the digital age, achieving an image quality that is similar to 70mm film and beyond remains an attractive idea, as a digital IMAX camera would make filming in large format significantly easier and more cost-effective. But how big would a digital IMAX sensor need to be for it to pass as an IMAX sensor? Is IMAX quality movie making in the digital realm even possible? Before we delve deep into adapting 1570 film to a digital format, let us take a brief look at the history of IMAX. The company was not always called the IMAX Corporation. At first, it was known as the Multi-Screen Corporation, which was founded in 1967 by three filmmakers named Graham Ferguson, Roman Kreuter, and Robert Kerr. As the name implies, the company first specialized in multi-screen productions, with the Labyrinth Pavilion at Expo 67 featuring a five-screen theater for projecting multiple 35mm movies on five different screens simultaneously and another theater boasting two large screens for conjoined 70mm film projections, both of those formats being used in order to create a mosaic of movies. One notable film using the multi-screen format is titled In the Labyrinth. and it proved to be a very compelling prototype. The mosaic of the movies either completed each other to form one continuous image across five projections, or the different film reels projected contrasting imagery, playing several different scenes at once across different screens. Like for IMAX theaters today, multi-screen stadiums were massive, with the labyrinth being several stories tall in order for people to view the many screens at the same time. Then the Canadian company would change its name. This occurred after the invention of the 1570 format, which engineer William Shaw helped realize in 1968. Shaw proved to be an instrumental figure for the company up until the day he died on August 31st, 2002. IMAX now has 1,600 theaters that are present worldwide, with the general public having come to accept IMAX as synonymous with impeccable movie experiences. Now, we cannot get to the drawing board and design our digital IMAX camera just yet. We have to understand what makes the format so special in the first place. So what is 1570? 1570 is basically a film-based system. That's 15 perforations and 70 millimeters wide for each frame. This system here was originally installed in 1998. The 1570 system offers a warmer, natural, higher resolution image than the laser system. This film format, also known as 1570 film format, is a standout format as film is fed horizontally into the camera or projector. A frame's negative spans across 15 perforations or 65 millimeter film and is later transferred to 70 millimeter film to be screened in IMAX theaters. The 1570 film format trumps traditional 35 millimeter film size, being 10 times larger and managing to fill out a gigantic IMAX screen, which can be as tall as an eight story building without needing to compress the image. The massive film format also comes with a significant advantage. That being, 1570 film possesses a clarity that is unmatched by other film formats. Sadly, epic screens and gigantic resolutions on film come with gigantic costs, figuratively and literally. Shooting IMAX is cumbersome, as the camera systems tend to be downright gigantic, making it exceedingly difficult to mount them on helicopters or in underwater rigs. Film cartridges last for only about three minutes at 24 frames per second, and due to the vacuum system present in the camera to hold the film in place, the camera is unsuitable for use during quiet scenes. To add the figurative cost of shooting IMAX, we also have to consider the literal ones with IMAX as a format being prohibitively expensive and 65mm IMAX film not only being unaffordable as a recording medium, but also hard to store and transport physically. Due to those reasons and potentially more we have not even considered, it is incredibly difficult to shoot an entire film on 1570 exclusively. In fact, the last movie to be mastered in the 1570 format was Dunkirk 
That was being shot in 1570 and we were one of the few theatres in the world that were asked to reinstall our 1570 systems to show the film in its natural format. Many, if not all of these problems could be eliminated with a digital IMAX camera, as recording onto a sensor instead of recording onto film would make the camera system's chassis less bulky in design. And with the ability to potentially separate the sensor block from the main body of the camera system, our dream 1570 digital camera might even be easily shoulder mountable and it would be able to film much quieter scenes. And this is where we get to our first real problem when it comes to making a digital IMAX camera, getting the digital footage to have the actual organic look of IMAX film. So we reached out to our friends and sponsor of this video, Film Convert, to ask them about their film emulation process and if you could potentially emulate 1570 film or 65 millimeter film for an IMAX digital camera. And we came up with the idea that it could work. But I think the most important thing that you need to understand is the difference between resolution, effective resolution, and sharpness. Digital sensors have a lot of a higher natural sharpness to it. And also modern lenses are also so much sharper as well. And so the other key element that there is is also the grain. Because when you apply 70 millimeter grain to an image, your eye gets drawn to that and it can kind of create the illusion that the entire image is shot at the perceived resolution. And so when we first originally did our film scans, we actually scanned them at Weta Digital on an ARRI scanner to try and get the best quality data. And they helped us with achieving, you know, every single bit of data and coming up with that original target. From there, we then emulated by converting the original camera data to density. And that's, you know, the measurement that is used for film. And then we work through the process like you do within film by mapping the data onto the different film stocks, like applying a print film emulation, viewing simulation, and all of those other things layered on top. And I would say in terms of pure color, we're already there. But where film emulation falls short is the interplay of light between the different layers of film that creates that kind of organic feeling that you have with film usually. And the best we can kind of do is approximate the feel by adding in different effects and things like that. So I think if you were to get a like very super sharp 8K image with an anamorphic lens and then scale it up to 16K and chuck on some 70 millimeter grain, you'd probably end up with something that looks very close to I digital IMAX in like perceived detail. However, film has the natural softness to it and you would be able to manipulate it into something that looks comparable on IMAX, but we haven't been able to try it, so we don't really know for certain. But otherwise, we'll just have to wait for like 16K cameras to come out and see what happens then. And Film Convert has let us share the film emulation love with you all here for a special 50% off all products for their Black Friday sale. And Film Convert has some amazing products like their film emulation software we've been talking about for this episode, Film Convert Nitrate, and they also have Cinematch, which allows you to quickly match the color and look of different camera sensors if you have to color correct multiple different cameras for a project. Believe me, it's a lifesaver. To snag this deal, click on the link below in the description and use the code VOYAGER to get your 50% off. Now, back to some IMAX cameras. Even projecting the image in an IMAX theater is a massive pain. A finished IMAX 70 millimeter print of film weighs hundreds of kilograms, and the length of the film can easily exceed 10 kilometers. The gargantuan projectors that allow 1570 film to be viewed weigh about two metric tons, about as much as a car. And due to the film needing to be fed horizontally through the projector, the reels need to be positioned horizontally, also using a similar vacuum system to hold the film in place in order to project it without error. It takes six to eight hours to assemble the nearly three hours of footage onto a single reel. It weighs about 600 pounds. Interstellar is 49 reels. Uh, it has special clamps on the edge to make sure we get the very most uh, out of the platter. Sometimes you get a little bit annoyed in movie theaters. You have tons of trailers. And the film version of this movie, there are no trailers because they won't fit. Let's be honest, recording and playing back movies is much more convenient when done digitally. And the fact that many IMAX theaters are getting smaller, and really at this point, a small group of IMAX moviegoers ever see 1570 film projections with their own eyes as only a few IMAX theaters use 70 millimeter prints as a projection medium today. It makes one wonder if gargantuan definitions are even necessary. Come to think of it, what cameras are IMAX movies shot with today? I'm 
majority of IMAX productions don't actually use IMAX cameras. Here's a chart by YM Cinema, showcasing the cinema cameras used for IMAX productions. The Alexa Mini makes the top of the list, a camera that technically doesn't even possess an IMAX certification, and at the bottom of the list we can spot the IMAX 9802. Despite it being a true IMAX film camera as opposed to the many digital cinema cameras in this list. Even if a movie was shot on an IMAX film camera, it's more likely than not that only a portion of the film was shot on 65mm IMAX film. So digital cinema cameras more often than not at this point are used as alternative systems for the rest of the film. A notable digital cinema camera is the Airy Alexa 65, which possesses a sensor similar in size to 65mm 5 perforation film. That camera actually achieves 6K resolution, but that doesn't come close to the theoretical 18K limit of IMAX film. Wait a second. 18K resolution? Is still the finest way to capture an image. It has resolution upwards of 12 by 18K, and that's a, that's a tall bill to fill in digital. So it's not just about resolution, it's about the contrast, it's about bit depth, it's about many other things that immerses you into the image. Regarding resolution for IMAX, many numbers get confidently thrown around, some more ridiculous than the last, from 12K to 18K, and even some estimating the resolution to be way above 20K to 40K resolution. Many people seemingly pick just a number with a K behind it and don't conjure up any corroborating information on how that definition was able to be determined. So what is the resolution of IMAX film? It's a very complicated question to answer. Technically, we could not even count the amount of particles on any given frame of a negative as the number will always be different and the size of the individual particles will always vary. Also determining the resolution of an image isn't as simple as counting the number of pixels needed to reproduce it. We have to take other forms of resolution into account. Definition being the pixel or particle count, spatial resolution being the pixel or particle density, radiometric resolution being bit depth, which determines how fine the changes between values can be, and of course temporal resolution which determines how many frames can be recorded per second. To help answer some of our resolution questions, we asked Powell Octel some questions. The man behind the 9x7 camera, which is capable of shooting movies beyond IMAX quality. So I think the, the most um, confusion comes from the fact what resolution is. Many people just uh, uh, count the number of photo sites, and that's not really what the measure of sharpness is. You know, we have cameras that, that have 12K uh, photo sites and they not able to resolve what 4K base sensor cameras can. So it's, it's 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 kind of relative in terms of the actual sharpness. So how we measure sharpness is using MTF modulation transfer function, which uh, it gives us contrast on a vertical scale and uh, scale. So IMAX film it depends um, also what stock you use and. Um, what lenses you use and then uh, whether it's a negative, whether it's a print. Um, but generally it would be, um, uh, so if, if you want to express this in spatial frequency with your pixels, it would be about 8K, um, maybe up to, up to 10K. 8K to 10K, nothing to scoff at really, but the number before the K in his estimates are lower than what most of the internet came to accept as fact. And one important thing he mentioned here is that resolution not only depends on the film or camera sensor, but also on other factors, such as what lenses have been used in order to capture the image. In this outstanding paper named Film Grain, Resolution and Fundamental Film Particles, we could read more into film resolution. Several types of lens aberrations can degrade resolution, but also how the film was developed or how the camera system was operated, and then depending on the film stock used, the results may vary even more drastically. A filmmaker can expect up to a 50% loss in detail across the board. So the theoretical limits of a camera system often cannot even be attained. A loss in quality due to lens choice and camera operation and other possible factors also is a reality for digital cameras, even for our dream IMAX camera or the 9x7 camera. Uh, in terms of resolution, um if all the ducks line up, uh, and that's a very big if, uh, mainly to do with focusing lenses, uh, movement, and all sorts of other um, issues other than camera, uh, you can actually obtain images that are four times the resolution of what's available, what, what's achievable on IMAX film, and that's actually measured on the screen. Yeah, we can, in ideal, can output 
18.7K uh, by 14K images that have detail right up to the Nyquist limit uh, with still about 5 to 10 percent contrast at the Nyquist limit. So in English terms, you can actually see the tiniest detail possible um, at that resolution, um, which is kind of uh, mind-boggling when it comes to actually filming it because not many lenses can go that far. Uh, focusing becomes really, really difficult and any movement, uh, obviously with motion blur, uh, just loses that detail. But um, the camera is capable of, of, of you know, producing that, that much detail. So now we know that the 9x7 shoots up to 18K. Our ideal digital IMAX camera has to shoot in that resolution too, but our sensor is going to be much bigger. The sensor should be as big as the 1570 film, which would be about 70 by 48.5 millimeters, needing a massive 85.16 millimeter image circle to be able to fill out the sensor without vignetting. And to put this in perspective for you, Aries new Allo 4 CMOS sensor they released just this year is only 28 by 19.2 millimeters with an image circle of 33.96 millimeters, which is less than half the size of our theoretical fully realized digital IMAX sensor. This sensor would be massive. To achieve an image circle this big, one would need to construct gigantic lenses that can fill out the sensor area. Another question is if those purpose-built lenses would even be able to resolve the image in the first place. So manufacturing lenses for a hypothetical 1570 digital cinema camera should be possible. But in this case, the lenses are just gonna be incredibly expensive. Then, bandwidth. To compete with IMAX, our digital 1570 camera must be able to shoot raw and be able to record in high enough bit rates in order to record 18K movies. Since it was hard to calculate just how big the data stream of uncompressed 18K video was going to be, let's use the 9x7 camera as an example. A camera that can shoot 18K video using a data rate of 10 gigabytes per second. For recording these massive files, the 9x7 even comes with internal storage, 4 or 8 terabytes in capacity, so the filmmaker can record a sizable portion of his scenes on board. So in recap, our insane 15 to 70 cinema camera would sport a massive 70 by 48.5 millimeter 18K sensor. It would need purpose-built lenses to be able to project an image onto the sensor in the first place and be able to throughput 10 gigabytes per second to internal storage, which of course is going to happen in an uncompressed raw format. And then finally, you would have to have a high-end film emulation tool like Film Convert custom built for this camera to help it more closely resemble IMAX film. This digital IMAX camera we've concocted would blow the 9x7 camera out of the water, or would it? There are a lot of misconceptions. For example, this camera, even though uh, the size of the sensor is it was classified as, as uh, APS-H, it's a um, very, very high resolution sensor. So um, depth of field is actually smaller than you get on the uh, 15 per 70 millimeter film with the same aperture and, and the same uh, angle of view. So um, this is because of the micro contrast and, and how, how detailed the images are. That's, that's, that's why the, the depth of field is, is, is so critical. So in terms of look, there's no way to tell. Uh, I can make it uh, look like 15 per 70 millimeter film, or I can make it, you know, the, 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 the focus deeper or, or, or shallower. I can make it a lot shallower than, than it is possible on 15 per 70 millimeter film. Uh, so in fact, uh, we can go even a quarter of the depth of field that's that's even feasible on a on the IMAX film. Hmm. Maybe the 9x7 already is the insane beyond IMAX camera system we have been trying to conceptualize throughout this video. It may have a smaller sensor, but it packs a significant punch being able to shoot in ultra high definition beyond 8K. Using cinema lenses which are already out there and which are still being used by cinematographers and others today, the 9x7 camera is a fascinating camera system which one day has to be looked at closer. But when it comes to the IMAX topic, we might have other reasons as to why the IMAX Corporation and many filmmakers alike are distant 
distancing themselves from 1570 film format. A vast majority of consumers will never experience an IMAX movie the way some cinematographers intend the film to be seen. And maybe the hype around resolution is a little bit overblown too, because the pixel count itself does not solely determine the quality of overall experience. But if you're interested in film cameras that are maybe a little bit more on the level of a consumer, check out this Kodak Super 8 camera that Kodak maybe abandoned or maybe they didn't. 